good morning everyone. Welcome to Children's Chapel. It's Father Lyndon here and today in the church we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. I wonder if you remember either your own baptism, perhaps you were too young, or maybe the baptism of a brother or sister or a friend, or maybe you're, you've been in church when there's a baptism takes place. It's a big celebration. So we can't gather together uh, like we would for a big celebration, like a baptism, but we can be here in Children's Chapel. I'm really happy to be joining you from uh, my home to start us off with a prayer. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this world. We give you thanks that you are with us. We give you thanks that you have come to be with us in Jesus. And on this day, as we celebrate his baptism, we also remember our own baptism. And we remember the promises that were made over us. Promises that we are now a child of God. And that you, God, are always with us. Strengthening us, protecting us, helping us, helping us to help others many great things and so we give you thanks and thank you for children's chapel thank you for this time that we have and help us to be a good friend a good friend with one another a good friend to you and we pray these things in god's name amen amen enjoy children's chapel So this is the story of Epiphany. And Epiphany is part of the Christmas story. And the Christmas story actually begins with Advent. So some of you remember this story from other years that we've told the Advent story. And it starts with the first Sunday of Advent, which is the Sunday of the prophets. And the prophets are the ones who said, there's something important that's going to happen in Bethlehem. And then the second Sunday of Advent, and that is the Sunday of the Holy Family. And we have Mother Mary and Father Joseph. And they rode to Bethlehem on a donkey. And here is the third Sunday of Advent. And that is the Sunday of the shepherds. And the shepherds were the very first ones to hear about the birth of baby Jesus and to go see Jesus in the manger. And then the fourth Sunday of Advent is the Sunday of the Magi. And here, are the Magi. But they didn't actually come before Jesus was born. In fact, they come late every year because they come on Epiphany, which is 12 days after Christmas Day. So we're not actually going to put them in our story just yet. And then we have Christmas Day. And that, of course, is the birthday of baby Jesus. And so here is Jesus in his manger. And here is the cow looking on 
and seeing a baby where his hay is. But today is Epiphany. And Epiphany is 12 days after Christmas. And so the Magi come late every year. The Magi were wise men. And in their time, they knew many, many things. But one of the things that they especially knew about was the stars. And so they could look up in the sky and they knew where the stars were supposed to be at different times of the year. And they could use it kind of like a calendar. And they could tell people when was the time to plant their crops in the spring. And when was a good time to go on a sea voyage across the ocean? Or when might be the time that you could go on a high mountain pass when the snow wouldn't be very high? And they were looking up at the sky and they saw a wild star. And they didn't know what that wild star was because it wasn't on any of their maps. And they decided to follow it. And they followed it all the way to Bethlehem to see a king born, and the king was baby Jesus. Let's go ahead and put out our candles for our Sundays in Advent. Christmas candle. And let's go ahead and light those. So we have this candle of the prophets and of the Holy Family and of the shepherds. and the Christmas candle. When the Magi came to see the new king who was born, they brought gifts for a king. And so one of the first gifts that they brought was gold because gold is a good gift for a king. But they also brought a gift of frankincense. And frankincense isn't just for kings. Frankincense is actually something that was used to worship God and to pray to God. And so they were showing that this is a very different kind of king. So actually, let's take some of this frankincense and burn it. So we can take frankincense and burn it. And at first, there might be a bit of black smoke, but then after that, there's white smoke, and the white smoke is the one that smells. Mm, you can smell the frankincense. Well, okay, you can't smell the frankincense, but I can. And so I will tell you that that frankincense smells a little pungent and a little sweet, and it smells a bit like church because Today, sometimes we still burn frankincense and we have a special holder and it's on a chain and the priest will come and waft it and then the smoke goes around the church and you can smell it. And so it smells like prayers. And the final gift that the Magi brought was myrrh. And myrrh is also a spice, 
but myrrh was used for burials. And not just for any burials. Myrrh was used at very important burials. So we can take some of the myrrh. off smoke too and it smells it smells very different than frankincense it smells much more like woodsy smell when it burns so the last gift that magi brought to the baby jesus this new king was myrrh Now, let's change the lights. Remember this, some of you from Godly Play, where we will change the light. And now you see the light has changed. And instead of being just right here, now it goes up fills the room. video, this light will have left my house and gone out on the winds, and maybe it's made it to your house. Hi, and welcome to our Holy Comforter Children's Chapel video, which premiere on the first Sunday of every month. I am Natalie Keller, the Director of Children and Youth Ministry here at Holy Comforter, and today we're going to talk about our new church season, also known as Epiphany. Epiphany starts on January 6th, which was Wednesday. We celebrate 12 days of Christmas. Sounds a little familiar, doesn't it? In between Christmas Day and Epiphany. That is our Christmas season. So that means for those 12 days, you can leave up your lights, decorations, ornaments, crush theme, nativity, and eat lots of Christmas cookies while we wait for Epiphany. Epiphany is special because that's the day that we celebrate the revelation of Christ incarnate. So that means God in human form walking on earth. In this case, we are celebrating not his birth, which is the first revelation, but when the Magi came from far away to come visit him and give him his three gifts. Do you know what those three gifts are? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So now we know that why we celebrate Epiphany. Let's look at how some other people celebrate Epiphany. Our Orthodox brothers and sisters celebrate Christmas on today. I mean, some of them will celebrate Epiphany and another 12 days, while some of them, like the Armenian Orthodox Church, they celebrate a combined service called the Epiphany, where they celebrate both the birth of Jesus, his baptism, and the Magi in one huge celebration. Another tradition that's common around the world, especially in areas of Mexi or Spanish and French influence, is a king's cake or whatever the corresponding local language is. Now, 
what's inside the king cake and how it's made exactly vary from country to country and culture to culture but what is a common theme generally they put a little plastic baby Jesus in the cake and then when you serve the cake whoever gets the baby Jesus not only has to bring the cake next year but they are also said to have a year of good luck in advance Another thing that is really, really common within the Episcopal Church, other Anglican churches, and Catholic churches is called chalking the door. So because it's Epiphany, we have to take down our Christmas decorations and chalk the door. We do this to welcome in all the good opportunity of the next year. And we write the three names of the Magi, or the three assigned name for the Magi, who visited Jesus. So first we take this down. So my wreath will go away. Then I'm gonna take out my chalk, and I don't know if you'll see it because my chalk is kind of dark, but I'll put it up on the video. You're going to put the year, so it's 2021. So you do two, zero, and then you do a plus sign, two, zero, plus Casper, Melchor, Oop, so just to see, plus Balthazar, plus, it's so last year, so 21, right? Some people put other crosses on their doors or other ways to decorate, but I think that's it for me. However you choose to celebrate this year, remember that today is a day that we celebrate one of the revelations of Christ and that God came to earth. He lived a life full of joy, happiness, struggles, insecurity, and anxieties, just like you and me do every single day. And that is really special because we get to share those moments with God. Hi friends it's time that we bring Children's Chapel to an end. I hope it's been a good time together. So I'd like to offer up another prayer, a prayer to help us go out from Children's Chapel into whatever else this day might bring. So let us pray. God, we thank you for Children's Chapel. We thank you for the lessons we have learned. We thank you for our friends who are part of it. We thank you for our leaders who help make it possible. Now, God, help us as we go out into this day, whatever this day might bring, help us to be a good friend. Help us to be helpful with one another. Remind us of our own baptism, where you promised to not only be with us always, but always also to strengthen us so that we can do the things you would have us do and be with the people you would have us to be with. And we're really grateful for that. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen, friends. See you next time.